274 5297 Ron Paul will be up with us in about seven or eight minutes. Uh, Bob Bird, a candidate for the United States Senate, is on the line with us. Uh, Bob, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Eddie. Uh, and it's, uh, it's been a very, very busy week for me, as you can imagine. Yeah, I bet, uh, Bob. Um, Bob, tell people why they should vote for you. Because I will actually obey the Constitution, and every one of our colossal problems are self-inflicted, and they are caused because we don't obey the Tenth Amendment. Now, that's not the entire Constitution, but it does a little thing for us. It tells us how to interpret it, and it tells us that we are to interpret it strictly in regards to federal power. And when we have created through the New Deal, the Great Society, and all the myriad other welfare programs, not only for personal but also corporate welfare, we have created a massive socialist engine. And I laugh when I hear conservative Republicans start talking about can't vote for the Democrats, they're socialists. But the Republicans have been part of the problem if they are honest about it. It's time to look into their souls not just about Ted Stevens, but how the Republican Party has become the Me Too Party. Yeah. Instead of saying that we need to cut the budget, they need to ask, is the budget constitutional? Isn't, isn't, isn't uh, Ted Stevens one of the biggest problems why we have a, trend, a $10 trillion deficit? And, Absolutely. You know, it's why I ran against him in 1990, aside from the fact that he's in favor of abortion rights. Right. Well, there is, there is a long litany. Ted Stevens is nothing but a liberal with an R in front of his name. And all this talk about special election, what are the conservatives of Alaska waiting for? I am right here now. And if you realize and accept that reality, Ted Stevens is 12 points or something like that behind in the polls. He cannot win. And so why are you going to try and stick with the Titanic? It's going down. Yes. And I'm waiting here as the lifeboat of Alaska's conservatives, and I will obey the Constitution in the same way Ron Paul did. Let me you do something not, here. Let me do something. The thing I want to say, Eddie, is yeah. that you may not like everything that happens when you obey the Constitution, but the net effect is Freedom. Let's do something here real quick. I want to get this out of the way early, and, and it's a question that probably the only thing that really you and I differ on, I think, in a large degree, maybe there's more, but um, is the the idea of the war, and maybe Ron Paul will help uh, uh, clarify this, but Ron Paul and you share a different opinion from most of my conservative friends, and probably a lot of people listening to this show, is that you guys have um, refused to accept the fact that we should have uh, gone into Iraq, and and would you help help me better understand why that is? Okay, first of all, I'll take it from the constitutional basis. Congress started abdicating the responsibility of accepting the decision whether or not we go into war or not, and passed it off to the executive. They did it in Korea. It was an earthquake when it happened. Robert Taft, the great senator from Ohio, said, "What are we doing?" And then we did it in Vietnam. And Gulf War I went quickly and it went well, although there, there were, every death is a tragedy. But Iraq is not a war going well. It is a war gone wrong, and it's because we don't have an exit strategy. So the first thing I would say is, guess what? The Constitution gives us an opportunity to use the instrument of violence, because that's what war is, in order to take out a limited target. It's called an act of reprisal, and it hasn't been utilized since the Tripolitan War, and I could stand corrected on that, but I think that's the last time Congress utilized it. It means there's a limited goal, there's a, a target that's clearly identified, and then there's an can, exit can, can, but, but, but can we be assured that a candidacy of yours, can you assure conservatives like myself that, that you will be hawkish, that you will be a great defender of America, even though we may disagree on the um, the on the uh, the invasion of Iraq, 
I will be a great hawk to defend America, but not to defend the world. Now, I want to. I just got a question. All right, I tell you what, let's do. I, I want to interrupt you because uh, we have a, a, a good friend of yours and an, uh, a, a distinguished individual from the United States Congress, uh, Congressman Ron Paul, is on the phone. He's joining in on the conversation. Congressman Paul, welcome to the program. Thank you. Nice to be with you. Yes, thank you so much, and it's an honor for all of us to hear from you up here in the cold state of Alaska. It's about 22 degrees here, so uh, well, welcome to the program today. Thank you. Uh, uh, Ron, uh, uh, Congressman Paul, I wanted to um, uh, your, I understand that you're endorsing uh, Bob Byrd, and we wanted to give you an opportunity to do that here today. Okay, yes, I think he needs to be in the Senate, and the sooner the better. We need help Yes. in Washington, so... Uh, Hopefully that'll work out for him. Yes. Uh, at the Chamber of Commerce, Dr. Paul, uh, on Tuesday, they asked me if I read any good books lately, and I told them The Revolution, a manifesto <laughs> by Ron Paul. Uh, they didn't throw you out of the room, did they? No, they didn't, but they only allowed me to answer 40% of the questions. Me and the Libertarian candidate kind of felt like unwelcome stepchildren out there as they skipped us for some of the questions. Mm -hmm. uh, Congressman Paul, uh, Give us your feelings about the invasion of Iraq and, and where uh, where you feel that, you know I, know, I know you understand that a lot of conservatives differ on this issue. Um, I have a different opinion on the invasion of Iraq than you do. Would you help us a little bit on that, better understand? Because I think that's about the only thing that conservatives and you are split on. Is that not true? Well, at the present time, yeah. I'm, I'm with, I was with George Bush uh, completely in the year 2000, when he condemned uh, Clinton for going into Kosovo and going, getting into notion building in Somalia, and all the Republicans opposed uh, Clinton when he was involved, and and uh, yet now it, it, the shoe is on the other other foot now, and uh, everybody's supposed to support uh, the Republican wars, but not the Democrat wars. And right. I think we should always support the Constitution. So from the very beginning, matter of fact, many many years before the beginning of the war, because I smelled this war coming. Uh, early on, especially after 1998, when we had the Iraqi Liberation Act uh, passed, which said that we're going in and have regime change, just out of the clear blue. And uh, so I spoke out for, you know, five years before they went in, but they finally found enough excuses, and all of them were false. They weren't true. And uh, it's it's very costly when you do things illegally. If, uh, if we'd restrain ourselves and only go into these regions with a full declaration of war with the goal of winning and getting it over with and doing it for national security interests, uh, you know, it wouldn't be so bad. But when you go in and it's political, the resolution actually said that the president has the authority to go to war if and when he pleases, and, uh, if, and his job is to enforce U.N. resolutions. Well, there's a couple strikes against us there. First, we shouldn't be going in to uh, enforce U.N. resolutions, and we shouldn't allow the president to make the decision. Uh, what, and then the separate issue of should we have gone or not, that could be debated too. But the way right. we did was just horrible. Well, Congressman Paul, Dr. Paul, uh, now that we're there, it, it seems that the, the surge is working. What is, it, it, do we leave it up to the generals? Uh, Obama wants to pull out tomorrow. McCain says, let's leave it up to the generals on the ground. Give us your feelings of, of the right exit strategy. Well, I don't think Obama or McCain are any different. Uh, Obama pretends he's different. He says, well, we'll give them 16 months, and then we'll start coming out. But in the meantime, we're going to put more troops in Afghanistan and beef up our occupation there, which is, is, is not going well at all. But uh, it all depends on how you measure things, on whether it's success or not. We we had to literally bribe the Sunnis to quit fighting, uh, and we rearmed all the Sunnis with American weapons. Uh, I think it's total chaos over there. I mean, they won't even agree to the the great you know the uh, ceasefire or when we're going to leave. I mean, they can't even come up with this agreement. I think I think we're still at the very early stages of the chaos in in Iraq. Uh, there are less people getting killed, but there's still a lot of people killing, killed. And now we're using Iraq to go into Syria. Uh, the Iraqis hate this. The Syrians hate it. We're just building up more and more enemies. But we just go over to Syria and start killing people. Congressman Paul, uh, Dr. Paul, would you please give us a little, uh, There we had this so-called bailout rescue plan, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, I, I, w I thought they ought to round some people up and throw them in jail. 
uh, you know, not only in the Congress, but in uh, but over on Wall Street also. Uh, I was, you know, I thought bankruptcy was the right answer. Uh, what say you? I agree with you. Bankruptcy is the right answer. It, it serves a very useful purpose. You get rid of the bad investment and the bad debt, and the wor worthwhile assets end up in stronger hands and people who are smart. Today, what we're doing is we're penalizing those who did good investments, ta taxing them to prop up the bad investments. So it's very, very bad. But I think this, this whole mess that we have there is a good demonstration of the lack of difference between the, the two parties and their leadership because immediately McCain and Obama, they rush back, you know, to vote for it. You know, if McCain had gone back and said, this is outrageous, I'm a conservative, we shouldn't be spending this money, and and if he just said what you said, you know, the yeah. bankruptcies are necessary, yeah. I bet he'd be up 10 points. I think he would too, uh, Dr. Paul, absolutely.